Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about redox reactions. First we'll be talking about redox chemistry, half equations, and then reduction potential and reactivity. Here are our syllabus dot points. So first off let's consider what is redox. Well redox chemistry is going to refer to the exchange of electrons. We can see in the equation below that the ion 2 plus ion has gained two electrons in order to form the iron metal. We call this process reduction. The magnesium has gone from a neutral to a 2 plus state, meaning that it has lost electrons. We call this process oxidation. Redox chemistry is named in such a way because they must occur together. It is important to notice that the number of electrons which are lost in oxidation must equal to the number of electrons that have been gained in reduction. So looking at our previous example, we have gained two electrons and we have lost two electrons. An easy way for us to remember this is with the analogy oil rig. It stands for oxidation is loss, while reduction is gain. Look at the equation below involving magnesium. Have a moment to pause the video and think about whether this is an example of reduction or oxidation. If you said that this was an oxidation reaction, you are correct. What you have noticed is that the charge of the magnesium has gone from 0 to 2 plus, indicating that it must have lost two negative electrons in order to gain two positive charges. Similarly, we can also tell that this is lost because the electrons are on the product side having been relieved from the magnesium metal. Redox reactions can be represented by what we call half equations. A half equation describes the oxidation or the reduction steps of a particular reaction. In the example below, there is a reaction between sodium metal and water, leading to the formation of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. The electron loss is given as the sodium forms the sodium cation, and then the water is going to gain those same two electrons in order to form hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. As we can see, there is an equal number of electrons being lost from the oxidation of sodium as the number of electrons which are being gained from the reduction of water. The electrons cancel each other out if we add equation 1 with 2 in order to give us our neutral species equation which is Na plus H2O forms NaOH and H2 gas. The reduction potential table demonstrates reductions for various substances in order of increasing electrical potential. The electrical potential that are produced from varying reduction reactions vary and what the electron potential is is it's the ease of accepting an electron. The higher the electrical potential for the reduction half equation the more easily reduced that substance is going to be. So this means that silver, which has the highest reduction potential, is going to be the most easily reduced of the substances on the table. These reduction potentials will be provided to you in the HSC on the Nessa data sheet. So we just said that a high reduction potential correlates with a high electrical potential. We also know that reduction is the gaining of electrons. And that means that oxidation is the reverse, it's the loss of electrons. So the oxidation potential is just the opposite of the reduction potential. For example, the reduction of magnesium, 2 plus, is given as negative 2.36 volts. This means the oxidation of magnesium into magnesium 2 plus is going to be equal to positive 2.36, which is the negative of negative 2.36. So a lower reduction potential means a higher oxidation potential, meaning that it is more easily oxidized, and therefore, it is more reactive. Recapping on reactions between metal and metal ions, a less reactive metal solution is going to ionize a more reactive metal. So the less reactive metal will deposit out of solution. For example, silver nitrate and copper metal will cause the silver metal to deposit around the copper wire, while the copper wire will go into solution in order to form the 2 plus ion. Now that we have a better understanding of redox chemistry, we are able to understand what is occurring between the metal and metal ions in terms of oxidation and reduction. In this particular reaction, is the silver ions are being reduced into silver metal. The copper is being oxidized into copper ions. Because the silver is reduced, it is going to be causing the oxidation since they occur together. And so the silver is going to be called the oxidizing agent or the oxidant. Since copper undergoes oxidation, it must cause the reduction and so it is called the reducing agent or the reductant. The spontaneity of a reaction, or whether or not a reaction is spontaneous, 
is a term that's used to describe reactions which occur without the addition of external energy. Examples of some spontaneous reactions include the burning of wood, which once set alight will continue to burn without interference, or the dissolution of sugar in water. If we add sugar to water, it will dissolve on its own. We are able to use reduction potentials from our reduction potential table to recognize whether a redox reaction is spontaneous or not. So an example is a reaction between copper solid and silver ions, which we just looked at. In this case, silver is being reduced, so the electrical potential of the reduction of silver is going to be 0.8 volts as indicated by the table. Copper, which is being oxidized, means that its electrical potential is the negative of its reduction potential, which is negative 0.34. When we add these values together, we get a total potential of positive 0.46. And what this tells us is that if the total potential is positive, it means a reduction reaction must be spontaneous. This is why when I dip copper into silver ion, the silver deposits immediately. We can look at the opposite reaction. If we add silver into copper ion, the reaction does not occur. This is because if I add the oxidation potential of silver, negative 0.8, with the reduction potential of copper, 0.34, I end up getting a value that's negative. So a reaction occurs if the metal has a lower reduction potential than the metal ion, or if the metal ion has a higher reduction potential than the metal. If I react magnesium with water, the oxidation of magnesium has a potential of plus 2.36, which is the negative of negative 2.36. And the reduction potential of water is going to be negative 0.83. When we add these together, we get a value of 1.53, meaning that Magnesium will react spontaneously with water. Inert metals do not react because the total reduction potential is negative. So when I do silver with water, silver which theoretically is getting ionized and the reduction of water is going to have a negative voltage, which means that we are going to have no reaction. Let's look at some practice questions. This question asks us to determine if the chemical reaction will occur between aluminium and copper nitrate. We assume the reaction leads to the dissolution of the metal into solution, which means that the aluminium metal would be oxidized and the copper nitrate would be reduced. So let's write out our expected equation. So let's write out our oxidation of aluminium. The oxidation of aluminium is going to be the negative of negative 1.68, which is positive 1.68. The reduction of copper is going to be 0.34. When we add these values together, we get 2.02. .02. This means that this reaction will occur spontaneously when we add aluminium into copper nitrate. We can look at another example involving silver nitrate and iron metal. The expectation is that the iron solid is going to be ionized while the silver is going to be reduced. The oxidation of iron, the oxidation potential of iron is going to be the opposite of its reduction, which is going to be the negative of negative 0.44, and that's just simply 0.44. The reduction of silver is given as 0.8. When we add these values together, we get 1.24, which is a positive number, and so this reaction will also occur spontaneously. The reaction between zinc metal and magnesium chloride will lead to the oxidation of zinc and the reduction of magnesium. The oxidation of zinc metal will have a potential which is going to be the negative of negative 0.76, which is positive 0.76. The reduction of magnesium is given as negative 2.36 volts. If we add these values together, we end up getting a value of negative 1.60 volts. Because the electron potential is negative, this reaction will not occur spontaneously. This equation asks us for the reaction between copper 2 chloride and zinc metal. Again, in this case, the zinc metal is going to be oxidized, while copper is going to be reduced. The oxidation of zinc 
is going to have a electrical potential which is the negative of negative 0 0.76 which is positive 0 0.76 the reduction of copper to plus is going to be equal to 0 0.34 and if we add these values together we end up getting a value which equals to 1.10 because this is positive this reaction will occur spontaneously this question asks to write the half equations for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium if we remember the reaction between a metal and an acid produce a salt and hydrogen gas. In this reaction, sodium has been ionized into the sodium plus cation. The hydrogen has been reduced from H plus into H2. This question asks to write the half equations to work out the net ionic equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium. In the previous question, we wrote the half equations for the sodium. This was equation 1, and this is equation 2. Since there is the same number of electrons on both sides, we are just going to add these two equations together.